Welcome back to SFF 180 Retro, where I talk about older SFF books, maybe not major celebrated classics, but books worthy of your time and attention all the same. Today, a young American girl moves to a manor house in the English countryside, where she encounters a spectral tragedy in Peter S. Beagle's 1999 YA fantasy Tamsin. Hello again, everyone. Thomas here, your host as always. Thank you for joining me. Peter S. Beagle is one of modern fantasy's most revered authors and a genuinely kind and gracious man. Best known for his very meta 1968 novel The Last Unicorn, Beagle's life in recent years took a dark turn, a truly appalling situation involving allegations of elder abuse and financial fraud against an unethical, to put it mildly, business manager who shut Beagle out of revenues to which he was legally entitled. But just in March of this year, karmic justice was delivered at last when Beagle successfully regained all legal rights to his literary works after more than half a decade of lawsuits. Sometimes the good guys do actually win. But beyond The Last Unicorn, Peter S. Beagle has written a number of fine folkloric fantasies for readers of all ages. And a book that should not be overlooked is Tamsin a contemporary YA fantasy that stands as another high watermark in a career consisting of practically nothing but. It not only gives a nice little spin to the haunted house story, I mean, here it's the ghost who needs saving, but also in weaving it into a historical fantasy framework and topping the whole thing off with a coming-of-age theme. The book was a well-deserved World Fantasy Award finalist. Jenny Gluckstein is a disaffected and sullen adolescent living in New York with a mother from whom she feels so disconnected that she calls her not mom, but by her first name, Sally. Sally is marrying an Englishman named Evan, who, to Jenny's horror, is about to whisk them all away to the British countryside in Dorset, where he's been hired to restore a manor house more than 300 years old and turn the surrounding land into a functioning farm. Miserable beyond words, not least over the six months her beloved cat will have to spend in quarantine, Jenny finds her life uprooted and herself saddled with a new stepdad and two stepbrothers, the youngest of whom attaches himself to her immediately. I mean, if anything can get the teen angst thing shifted into high, it's a situation like that. But things change. When Jenny encounters the ghost of Tamson Willoughby, the daughter of the man who originally founded the farm more than 300 years before. Tamson who even has her very own ghost cat, was the unlucky and unwilling object of the affections of Baron George Jeffreys, the fanatical judge who ruthlessly sentenced all those who rebelled against the crown in the Monmouth Rebellion during a series of trials in 1685 called the Bloody Assizes, which were so brutal and draconian that Roland Freisler himself would have cringed. But Tamson, naturally, already had a love, a young man named Edric, who, through no fault of his own, found himself caught up in the rebellion. The expected confrontation is what led to Tamsin's fate as a restless spirit. But things aren't over for her, even after 300 years. The fearful wild hunt, that mob of spectral huntsmen who chase the spirits of the dead through the skies on dark and stormy nights, are active in Dorset again. And it appears that the ghost of Jeffreys himself still menaces Tamsin, and will continue to do so unless Jenny can find a way to help. It's all exciting stuff, seeped in the pageantry of England's monumental history, with characters who, like all of Peter S. Beagle's characters, spring fully formed to life right off the page. The riskiest and most ingenious touch is Jenny's first-person narration, something <laughs> that I certainly would not have the guts to try if I were a 60-year-old male writer. <laughs> Beagle's lifetime as a keen observer of humanity simply lends him the talent to pull off Jenny's voice, which convinces simply because she just sounds natural and universal, not like your usual adult writer's attempt at sounding, you know, cool in teenage. Yes, there are moments when Beagle himself can't help shining through in the dialogue. Every once in a while there's a simile that's maybe a little too clever. But it helps that Beagle has Jenny writing her story at age 19, thinking back on events six years before. This gives her just the right amount of budding emotional maturity even to criticize her own behaviors many times, in particular her immature little sulks at having to move to England in the first place, and her failure to be as loving and supportive towards her mother as she probably could have been. 
What's more, Jenny's and Tamsin's friendship feels like a real friendship. Not once does Beagle need to oversell the whole ghost thing. Indeed, the subtle touches are what bring a convincing eeriness to the proceedings, all the more effective in that Tamsin certainly isn't intended as a horror story. Depending on how well she remembers her past and feels connected to her ancient home, Tamsin is more or less tangible, fading to almost transparency and often forgetting who Jenny is as the story barrels towards its frantic climax. Devices like these are Beagle's way of measuring out the story's tension, and coupled with our investment in the characters, it all makes for smashing storytelling. Wonderful entertainment in every way, Tamsin blends mystery, history, <laughs> and the hope of love that blooms strongest when you're very young, into a novel sure to become as dear to readers' hearts as The Last Unicorn. And there you have it. That's all I've got time for on this episode of SFF 180. Remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's Army get little perks like getting early access on some of my videos, the ones that I finish editing early enough anyway. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank all of those lovely people for their added support. I use the Patreon money to pay Matt Olson, my channel artist, the wonderfully gifted artist who does my awesome thumbnails. So again, thank you very much for that. I want to thank all the rest of you for being the greatest viewers in all of BookTube. And until I see all of you next time, remember, be safe, be careful, be healthy, and happy reading. <laughs>